Good morning, Kingsley United Methodist Church family and friends. Pastor Colleen Weirman coming here to you live on Saturday morning with another daily devotion for April 5th, 2020. I'm going to be using the upper room again, and then I'm going to give you some of my own thoughts. Um, this scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6. And it's entitled, God's Faithfulness to Israel. And I'm going to read it in the New Revised Standard Version for you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done his miracles, and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. So today's devotional is actually from Friday, April 3rd. Um, and it is from Dana Nestor from Pennsylvania. And she writes in the upper room, thank you, Dana. After my heart transplant, I began taking time to slow down and reflect on the little miracles that happen in our everyday lives. Just after my operation, my mom asked me what I wanted when I came home. I told her that I wanted an orchid. I felt a new desire to learn about orchids and to take care of some while healing at home. I arrived home to find a beautiful purple orchid for my mother. I learned how to care for it and it made me smile. The following year, I received a letter from my heart donor's brother, and we started chatting over the next few months. I learned that Caroline, Carolyn, my heart donor, had saved the lives of several people by donating her organs. I told her brother that on Caroline's birthday, I planned to put flowers at my church in her memory. He replied that Caroline had loved flowers, especially orchids, which she grew in her backyard. At that moment, we knew God and Caroline, Carolyn, were sending us a little sign that all was well. I am almost three years post-transplant and I still collect orchids in memory of Carolyn. Every day during the second chance at life that God and Carolyn have given me, I watch for the little signs of God all around us. So again, thank you, Dana Nestor from Pennsylvania. Continue to pray for you and your continued health. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Psalm 103. It starts off with joyful praise to God, lifting up God's holy name, telling of all the good works he has done and all the good deeds he has done for God's people. And that goes for verse 6. But if you read the rest of Psalm 105, these are some of the deeds that God has done, some of the things that were going on in the lives of God's people. It goes through a portion of the history of God's people and what was going on. Now, the psalmist is an um, optimist, and so he continues to talk about the great deeds and the wonderful things that God has done through Israel's history. So in Psalm um, verses 8 through 15 of Psalm 105, he talks about some of the good deeds. He starts with Abraham. Abraham, God tells Abraham, get out of your country, leave your family, go to a land you don't know very well, well full of enemies that will kill you. Okay, that's pretty negative. Is that one of the good deeds that God has done for God's people? But then listen to what the psalmist says after that in verse 15, a positive. He says, God allowed no one to do them wrong. So we know the story of Abraham. It took years for him to become a father of great nations, uh, of many nations, but it started off with a negative. He was told to leave his land, leave his family, leave everything he knew and go to a place where um, there were people that were out to kill him and his family. But the psalmist says, but God is with them and God was not going to let any harm to come to him. So it started off on a negative and it ended in a positive. Then the psalmist continues talking about God's wonderful works. He said that then there was a terrible drought that occurred and continued for seven years. It created a huge famine and God's people were starving. Again, kind of a negative. But then listen to verse 17 from the psalmist. God sent a man before them, God's people, Joseph was his name, and he was sold into slavery. Again, not very positive. But because of being sold into slavery, the king came and sought him out. 
and he was then becoming a privileged privilege leader in Egypt, saving his people from starvation. So if you remember the, the story of Joseph, his brother sold him into slavery and ended up working for um, the king, and then Pharaoh put him in charge of all the food distribution, and so he got to distribute the food to God's people, a positive. And then the psalmist continues talking a little bit about God's works again in verses 26 or 28. It says, then Pharaoh died, Jacob died, and Joseph died, and the Egyptians enslaved God's people. Again, a negative. Where is the positive? Well, hold on. In verse 26, it said, then God sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. And they performed many miracles and wonders, and Yahweh struck down Egypt's firstborn. Then Pharaoh finally told him to get out of Egypt. So a positive in the negative situation. The rest of the story of the psalm talks about the 40 years in the desert that the Israelites spent. Um, not real positive, but God provided for them along the way. A positive. Another thing the psalmist talks about is that uh, they made it to the promised land, but the inhabitants were much more powerful than they were, and there was no way they were going to be able to take over the land from them. A negative. But the positive was that God defeated all of those that were inhabiting the promised land and God's people lived there for many years. What's the point of all this? God's people experienced hardships, pain, and loss. That's the negative. But God never abandoned them. That's the positive. Will you choose to look at the situation that we're going through right now and just focus on all the negatives, all the deaths of people dying, all of the controversy that's going on, that you're stuck at home? Or will you choose to be like the psalmist and look for the positive things that God is doing in your midst? I'm praying that you will look for those positive things. And maybe you can even share them to um, the Kingsley United Methodist Facebook page. So stay positive. The psalmist praised God for all his good deeds and he told others about his good works. We need to focus on some positive things. So share those at the Kingsley United Methodist Church Facebook page. I'd be happy to speak about them on Monday when I do another daily devotion. Until then, I want like to remind you to tune in here at the Facebook page at Kingsley United Methodist Church at 9 a.m. for our Palm Sunday worship service live at 9 a.m. And then following that, we will have some music from the Lint family and some from, I believe, Kelsey Sexton as well. So that'll be fun. Um, so tune in uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. live on the Kingsley United Methodist Church Facebook page. Let us pray. Lord, we do thank you for the psalmist who talked about and praised God for all his wonderful deeds, and yet he went on to tell about the harsh reality of Israel's history, that they had experienced many negative things, that they had experienced pain and loss and illness and drought and famine, and some of the things that we're experiencing now kind, kind of come to mind. But then the psalmist focused on the positive things, that God was with them, God never abandoned them, God always sent someone in front of Israel to pave the way to make sure that they were safe and secure and protected. So we thank you, Lord, for reminding us today to look for the positives today in our situation. We can choose to focus on the negative or we can look for the positives. And I pray, Lord, with your help, we will do just that. In the name of Christ, amen. Okay, and remember kids, don't forget to bring your palms Sunday at 9 a.m. We're going to talk a little bit about Palm Sunday in the children's message. So join me tomorrow at 9 a.m. Kingsley United Methodist Church Facebook page. Talk to you soon.